Hey folks, you know, I said I was going to walk out of here and not try to stop, but you know, if I find something that is a diamond in the rough, and I think I found a, a couple of them, I just had to stop. And this will be my last interview of the day for Gotcha Racing, Gotcha Racing Live here at Anaheim. You know what? I'm talking to a fellow named Joe. He has a 1955 Teeper. Oh, I'm sorry, 1956. But nevertheless, let me let him tell you the story. How you doing, buddy? I'm pretty good, Joe, and it's nice to meet you and know that there's interest in these wonderful cars that only lasted in production for three years, 1955, 1956, and 1957. Now, the 1955 came out, and it looked very much the same as this car, except that it didn't have this Continental kit on the back. And people, they had the spare tire in the trunk, normal place, but people complained because they couldn't get two sets of golf clubs in there. So they moved the tire out, and then they got thinking that maybe what they need to do is make their cars a little bit longer, put the spare tire back in for 57. So they cut the production on these shorter, and they made the 57, which is a little bit longer. It has pins on the outside uh, in the back, whereas the back of the 56 is the same as the 55. Okay, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. Folks, Normally, I'm not going to do this. Normally, I don't do this, but I got to. I, as Joe is talking, my name is Joe, too. As he's talking, I got to show you what he's talking about, all right? So, you know, I don't let people get my mic, but I got to. Because I can't, you know, I can't do five things at one time. So, I'm going to turn the camera around. You guys be patient. Turn the camera around. Come on. Work with me. Work with, work with me. She doesn't want to turn around. Okay. Joe. Yes, you can hold my mic. Okay. Okay. You're special because I don't let no one hold my mic. All right, so tell me about the uh, the Continental kit and the whole shot. Well, here's the Continental kit mounted on the back. That's a very attractive looking feature of the car. Uh, whereas, suppose if you can show the 57, the spare tire is back inside the trunk. And that car is just a little bit longer than this one. So these cars were only made for three years. and. Part of the reason was that uh, they didn't sell as well as Ford people thought they would. Uh, and at that time, a gentleman by the name of Robert McNamara was president of Ford. And he believed that the best way to sell a lot of these cars was to put a back seat in them. So they discontinued after 57, the small birds, these uh, what we call the baby birds, and we call our club the early birds. And then the uh, 58s put it on at the back seat. Put it to the now, uh, the car had a wonderful beginning, uh, but when they got into the racing, it was a very interesting thing because the car also had a lot of safety features built into it. One, some of those safety features were like the deep dish steering wheel, so that if you were. So people said, wait, no, wait, a minute. we're selling a car with a lot of safety features, and they were putting racing engines in it. That doesn't make sense at all. So they got out of the racing business against the Corvette and decided to just make it a, 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 a gentleman's luxury car. And uh, that's what it's turned out to be. If they only knew, if they if they had a Ouija ball, if they had some kind of a crystal ball with the Ouija board attached to it to tell what these are going to turn into, they probably would have kept that going a little longer. Well, it turned out Mr. McNamara, you know, was the Secretary of Defense during the Vietnam War, a controversial figure, but he was a very smart man. He was absolutely right. When they went to the back seat, they sold a lot more. But in 55, 56, and 57, these cars were featured in the showrooms. It brought in people uh, into the showrooms. And one of the stipulations he made in manufacturing this car is he wanted as many features of the car uh, on the Thunderbirds to be also taken same ones that are used on the standard Fords. So if you look, the taillights on a, on a regular Ford and the headlights, for example, are the easiest things to spot. They're the same whether you're on a Thunderbird or a regular Ford. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So he was trying to save money, but it didn't turn out that there were that many things because the body style was quite different. You know, I, I, I've always been into 64s. I've had three of them. But I've always wanted a 55, 50, either one, either one of these, and I didn't know the difference between the 55s and the 56s. Now I do. Yep. Yeah. Now I do. Okay. 
on the retail market, if you can get one of these from somebody, prime out of their hands, what kind of ticket value are we looking at? Well, you know, they depend uh, a lot on what they have. For example, Bill's car, the 57, with the uh, uh, big engine in it, uh, they are well above 80,000 going for more, maybe 100,000, maybe more. These, uh, my car, maybe go for 30 to 50,000 in that range. Uh, 55s go a little bit cheaper, 20 to uh, 22. 35 or so. The 55s had, for example, six volt systems. The 56 is going to be a 12 volt system. But a lot of 55s that you buy today have already been converted to 12 volts. So it's the little things like that you have to look for and know about. But if somebody was interested in buying a Thunderbird, join a Thunderbird club. They're all over the United States. And there's a lot of members there who will help each other get a new member and help them buy a car. We're very collegial with that guy. Yeah, it's all about the you. Great. The families need to stick together. Now tell me this. As, um, incidentally, you'll find these cars overseas. You'll find them in almost every continent. We traveled to Norway. We knew we were going there. We called the Norway Club, and they met us at the dock. Really? Uh, same thing happens in Australia. Same thing happens in uh, Sweden and Germany. So, uh, the clubs are all over there. Your club, uh, the Baby Birds, you have a uh, website or something? Well, we have a parent uh, organization called the CTCI and uh, International. And so that's what keeps us all joined together as various clubs. Our club happens to be located uh, with members from Glendale, California, all the way down to Riverside. They're all over the place. And, uh, we get together at regional conferences. Uh, there's one coming up in Flagstaff. We'll drive a car to Flagstaff. Learn a little bit more about the Thunderbird, to judge him a little bit more. And uh, have a good time together. Well, I'm going to certainly see if I can uh, get my my hands on another Super 4. I saw one that has weeds around it, and that's that's my buy. I like that. When I get them like that, then I can put some tender. TLC into it and bring it back to life. So uh, we'll see. It just might be knocking on you guys' door by with my own 64. Okay. We look forward to seeing you, Joe. <laughs> hey, thank you so much for having your interest in our cars. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time, Joe. That's another Joe, by the way, okay? <laughs> so this is the end of the day. Uh, we're the baby birds here. It's a turnaround. Look at that. Okay. Now, that was a. This one is a. 56. That one is a 57. And where was was there a 55? They're around? gone. Now. Okay, they're gone. And that's how we do it, folks. Now I, I, you know, I'm gonna try to make it in my car this time. There's no other car on the lot, and these are the last uh, Primo automobiles here uh, that I that I consider Primo on the lot. So I'm gonna see if I can make it to my car. Hey, folks, Joe Britt, end of the day. Southern California, weather's great. Ton of Ford today, and our last stop was the baby, the baby Thunderbirds. You know, I've had three of them, all in the '64s. Hey, see if I can get my hands on another one. This is Joe Britt, and we are out for the day. Take care.